Number one. So for um, thermal equilibrium, which is the first chapter, first section of this book, we want to talk about temperature. So if you ask about, if you ask somebody that doesn't study physics really or any science, what is temperature? They'll just say, well, you can measure with a thermometer. However, that is not exactly correct. So we can start thinking about temperature uh, for a thing uh, as um, something that changes over time, for example. So for example, if I put something very hot next to something very cold and they start touching, they will reach a temperature that is the same for the both of them. So for example, we can say that temperature is the thing that's the same for two objects. Uh, it's the thing the same for two objects, but only after they've been in contact long enough. After they have been in contact for long enough. So, uh, now we're talking about something different. It's not something you can just measure. It's something that happens, almost. Uh, it's a thing that happens. So it's almost like an event. However, we know that the temperature is not an event. So this uh, definition as well doesn't really make sense. So before we did dive into more of what is the um, exact definition, I want to look at this definition that we gave. So we said that there is a long enough, but how much is actually long enough? Well, we can find this, of course. Now, I'm not going to an example because it just uh, doesn't really make sense right now. But I'm going to de determine uh, with a name this um, this long enough, this period of time. In fact, it's called relaxation time. So relaxation time is the period of time that two objects have a need for them to reach thermal equilibrium. Now, of course, it depends on a lot of variables, so we're not going to make an example, as I said. But again, let's think about our uh, definition of temperature. Well, if you think about it, temperature is something that the same for two objects or not but let's think about it there's many ways you can think about a two object plus what is uh contact well if you put the things in contact for a long time they actually change a lot of things for example imagine you have a cup of coffee with some cream on top of it Oops. All right, so after after relaxation time, as you said, the two temperature will be the same. So the cream, the coffee will be the same. However, after some period of time as well, we'll see some other change as well. So one other change that we can have is they start mixing. So the temp, the if we look, for example, the coffee from above, first of all, we have the cream on top, but after a while, the cream is kind of like gone all around. And so we can't really determine it anymore. So here we have another mixing. And this is called diffusion. And when these two reach a point where they don't, uh, where, for example, the cream doesn't diffuse in the coffee anymore, we can say that they reached a diffusive equilibrium. Diffusive. But now again, there is even another equilibrium in addition to terminal or the diffusion. There is one that is called mechanical. Mechanical is more of a exchanging energy. So for example, if we, uh, sorry, exchanging volume. So if for example, we're talking about the exchanged quantity and the uh, type of equilibrium, 
just gonna say equi. Okay. Well, we said the diffusive equilibrium, which is the one we have over here, is what? What do the two things just change? Well, we just said they exchange particles, molecules, whatever you're gonna call it. Instead, when we have uh, the uh, thermal equilibrium, what are we exchanging? We're not exchanging temperature, we're exchanging energy. So now we can see that we're not exchanging temperature between the two of them, but we're exchanging something that is energy. Anyhow, now let's say the last one, which is mechanical, we're exchanging volume. For example, if I'm blowing into a uh, balloon, this will exchange volume with the surrounding because of course it will increase in size and it will increase in volume. All right, so now we said the thermal and energy, thermal equilibrium and energy are related, okay? So there is something that relates temperature and energy. Well, if we think about this, let's have a very hot uh, object at 100 Celsius and a very cold, well, not very cold, just a colder object that's 20 Celsius. Now, if they touch each other, the energy will go from one to the other. And it's always from the one with the highest temperature to the one with the lowest. So the one with the highest is more likely to give away energy. So we can say that the uh, temperature is the measure of tendency of an object of an object to do what? Well, to spontaneously, because remember, we're not forcing the object to give up anything, spontaneously, um, give up energy. But what that, what, where does the energy go? Well, to its surroundings. So it's a tendency to, uh, of an object to give up energy to its surroundings spontaneously because again we can't force temperature to go from one part to the other um, and of course we goes one loses the energy because it's giving it up while the one that is less likely to lose it in fact will gain it and will reach a higher temperature um, so when we measure with a the thermometer we're actually measuring this value. We're measuring what is the tendency of uh, this object to give up energy. So let me just give another example. If I say that an object is at negative 20 Celsius and another object is at negative 30 Celsius, well, this one is more likely to give up. Why is it still giving it up? Because it doesn't make sense. Negative 20 means it shouldn't, it shouldn't uh, tend to give it up. However, it does. So we need to have a better scale. And that's why instead of using Celsius oops, or Fahrenheit, we have to use Kelvins. In fact, Kelvins are always positive. Any Kelvin is going to be greater than zero pretty much. Except for zero Kelvin, but there's nothing that is negative. So any object is always willing to give up energy as long as the surroundings are more likely to receive it than it is. As you can see with the Kelvin, there's never some, anything that is more likely to receive it than to give it. Everything is willing to give it, but what determines if the uh, energy will be given or not will be the surroundings. Um, have this helpful. Uh, it wasn't much, because of course it's just the first chapter, but we're starting to uh, define what's temperature which is not just something you measure with thermometer, as we've seen.